Hi everybody, Stuart Gorski here, Kilo 9, Sierra Tango Uniform, King 9, Sam Tom Union, in the city of Gardena, California. Just got my Radio Oddity uh, digital, small, tiny, 20 watt uh, digital radio, the DB25-D. Uh, I'm not doing an unboxing, that's kind of silly. I will lay that out for you. I got the uh, radio itself. It's very small, smaller than uh, many handhelds actually. You got your bracket for mounting. You got your uh, microphone, of course. It came with a programming cable and a uh, the power is supplied through a cigarette lighter. I'm not sure what you call it these days. Uh, I will cut that off and put some power poles or something on there. It also comes with the a GPS antenna that mounts in the back and should be that gold uh, connector right there. You got your uh, antenna connector, you got a small fan, and of course the power coming out. The radio itself is like you said, it's very small and uh, puts out 20 watts, which is plenty for most situ situations, uh, especially here in the LA County, the city area, all our repeaters and everything up on mountaintops. Uh, you can hit all this stuff on a half watt, uh, let alone 20 watts. This will go down to five watts, which is fine. It came from China. So I guess the next step is to program it and uh, give you a demonstration on how well it seems to be working. Hi everybody, on this new radio of mine by Radio Oddity, it's got an upper and a lower channel and I've got uh, the citywide in one zone and I got dispatch in the fire department zone. Problem is, is when there is sound on the bottom, when there's voices talking on the bottom where it says dispatch or it could be any other channel there, you cannot transmit on the citywide channel which in my case is uh, uh, what we use all the time. It's nice to listen to the fire and stuff like that, but if I need to talk on Citywide, I need to be able to press the transmitter and it needs to talk. And you cannot do that on this radio. At least I can't find the settings. Uh, you have to uh, switch to the top zone. You see the arrow. I'm pressing right now. I cannot talk on Citywide. It will not let me talk on Citywide. So I need to talk on citywide at any time. And until the bottom switches back up to the top, as you saw the arrow goes, I cannot talk. So I would like to know, is there a way to totally disable the bottom screen and only show one screen? I want only one screen on there. I don't want both. This is not a radio that's got dual receive. So in a lot of cases, it's very, very bad to have it like that. So is there a way to make this display only show one channel. I don't want both of them. I can't find it in the software. I know a lot of other radios have that. So that's what we need uh, at this point is to be able to disable one of the channels and just show one of them. And also um, the characters are not enough. Most modern radios are doing uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 characters. And this one's uh, a very limited to about 10, I believe. So it needs to have more characters. I will uh, post another uh, evaluation of this radio, but so far I'm getting very not happy. The software is abysmal. It's probably the worst software I have ever seen for a radio. I'd like to get into just a few of the items that need to be changed fairly quickly. The first one is the channel names. You only have 10 characters and in this uh, age of modern radios they're giving you uh, 12 minimum uh, 14 15 characters and that would be uh, a very good thing to have on this radio so you can have full names uh, next your group calls limited to 10 characters you need to have 12 to 15 characters for your group call your received groups same problem they only have 10 characters and you probably need 10 to 15 on that one 
Uh, zone names, same thing. Only 10 characters. There's a trend going on here. You need to have more than just 10 characters in a modern radio. Uh, next, we have the radio ID. I can see only one place to enter one radio ID. And again, all the really great Linkos and uh, all these other radios, uh, they allow you to have multiple radio IDs which you can assign to individual channels. And I do not see that anywhere in this software. I want to get back to the display and some of, some of the issues. If you see the top zone, it says citywide. That's supposed to say citywide tech. In the bottom one, that's a uh, LA County fire zone. And that's dispatch, but it should say LA County dispatch. Now back in the, you know, in the old days, uh, 15, 20, 30 years ago, when they first came out with radios with displays, all they could do is six characters because it cost a lot of money to do just a screen with six characters and everybody was thrilled. And you had W6TRW and K6CH and that's what you got. But nowadays, uh, with modern technology, there's no reason to do that. You could have uh, names like Cert Ops 1 or Field Ops 1, Field Ops 2, Mount Pleasant, or you could have something like Big Bear City that makes a lot more sense than just K6EH. So this radio needs to be fixed as far as the only 10 characters. Now a radio like this or similar radios are okay to use for a hobby, uh, for casual listening, but certainly not for uh, disaster services, e-com, and stuff like that. And you would never buy this for e-com unless you fixed the display problem. You have uh, on the top, you've got a channel, and here you can see it's just citywide, which should be citywide tech. The bottom, you're listening to L.A. County Fire Dispatch. When L.A. County Fire Dispatch goes off, you cannot talk on the citywide tech channel you can't even manually punch in the buttons it won't let you go to the other channel uh, until the bottom channel in this case dispatch uh, were to stop talking bottom line for now this radio needs some major software changes you need to be able to disable uh, one of the zones and only have one zone being displayed therefore you get no interference and the radio is effective if you want to scan through a bunch of channels fine that's fine but the way it is now it is just really hard to use for anything more than just casual listening listening and goofing around uh, one other thing uh, just to let you know it has a speaker output a speaker plug but the plug itself is not the normal uh, I'm not sure if that's eighth inch or whatever it is. It's a smaller plug, so you can't plug in your your external speaker. The, I may be able to go out and see if I can find an adapter for even a smaller pin, but it's just little things like that that drive me nuts. And I'll see if I can work around it and get it to work. So what are my plans for this radio? Well, the way it is, I was going to put it in a little go box for demonstrations. The radio is very small, takes up no room, it'll use very little power, and for being a little display piece, it'll be fine, but not for any kind of serious work. If they make some of the changes that I've recommended, then it could be more effective and actually a useful radio uh, for some kind of uh, more serious communications. Okay, everybody. This is Stuart Gorski, K9STU, and uh, you know, most of us are just hams, and we're having fun out there, and I'm doing this review about this particular radio. I come at it more from a disaster services uh, mindset, and a lot of you may not be. So, you know, maybe what I'm talking about today, the problems with this radio, maybe they don't affect you whatsoever, and I get it. And I'm just another guy, and you don't have to listen to me. But that's my two cents. And, uh, you know, if you like what I'm talking about, uh, uh, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, I'll be putting out more stuff like this. Take care, everybody.
Okay, everybody. Well, it's the next day, and I went out to the uh, Torrance Electronics, and I picked up a plug so I can now use a external uh, speaker for the radio. And uh, so I have to have an adapter, and it sticks out uh, quite a bit over here, but at least it works, and the sound is so much better with this speaker. Uh, I haven't figured out how to turn off this speaker or the a microphone speaker, but I'm pretty sure there's got to be a way to do that. So the sound is much better. Now, for the much more exciting news, I found a way to disable the uh, bottom and possibly or, or the top uh, zone. And so the interference of one channel going off, interrupting the important channel, has gone away and makes this radio a much more usable radio. Now let me see if I can show you how to do this. I'm going to go into the menu settings and I'm going to go to, let me see here, I got to go to this icon there, the gear icon, press the button and I will go to display mode. See? Display mode. Press it in and there we go. And if I go all the way down to SD mode, I will turn on the SD mode. And let's back out, back out, back out, and son of a gun, there you go. Now, it would be better, absolutely better, if this took up the whole screen, uh, but it does not. I have just grabbed my little radio out of the, uh, this little radio, and you know what? This little radio, if you use it for a certain purpose, it is an excellent, excellent radio. It's got a little antenna. It's very small, but this radio works really good uh, for local area repeaters and stuff like that. I'm very impressed with this. Anyways, I'm going to make a call onto the citywide channel, and let's see uh, how the, what the display shows up. This is Gargina Staff 1. The name is Stuart. Testing the Radio Oddity VD25-D mini radio. We're doing an audio check. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is Gardini Staff 1. Clear. I want to show you one more thing that I discovered. Right now we're in the uh, Gardena DCS zone with the citywide channel showing. In the bottom zone, the LA County Fire is not being displayed. So if you go to the radio and hit the BE button on top, the zone switch and now anything in the Gardena zone will not interfere with your LA County zone. I'm gonna go back very quickly to the Gardena DCS zone and now the radio is ready to go for uh, normal communications that will be uninterrupted. So as you could see, the bottom of the screen did not have any information displayed. It's just like a blank screen. The top, uh, the citywide TAC channel did display a uh, ham radio uh, DMR number that's put in my radio. I have not, it would have probably said my name on the screen here, uh, except I have not programmed uh, that number into uh, my radio as a contact, and I will do that eventually. But at any rate, so I'm very encouraged that the radio is now um, much more effective, much more usable. Is this your go-to radio? No, but can you use it in a pinch? I think possibly so. So uh, now that I've solved the problem of getting interference from a second band, um, I think that this radio is a much better, I'll give it a much better uh, review than what I did on yesterday. So I still think that uh, Radio Oddity needs to make those changes with the amount of uh, characters you need to have a uh, 12 minimum of 12 got to go up to maybe 14 or 15 to display on the screen and uh, there's a bunch of software bugs that are just impossible the software that you use to uh, work on your radio is very low resolution it's not very sharp and it's kind of difficult to work with it's kind of slow
When you want to set up a new channel, you go to the top and you select number one and you enter a channel. And you put in your information, but you can only get half of the information is there. So you have to use the scroll bar and scroll to the right to uh, finish up the information for the channel. Then you have to use the scroll bar and go back and go to number two and fill out that information, scroll to the right and finish the information for that channel and it keeps going back and forth, back and forth. What you need is an add channel button and a page pops up just for that channel. You can see everything on the screen, you can fill it out and when you're finished you hit a next button and the next channel pops up for population. This software is a nightmare. So after a couple of days of trying to program the radio and seeing how usable it is, I've got a, a couple of conclusions for you. One, the software is terrible. The owner's manual is not bad at all, but the software is terrible. It's slow, it's low resolution. Adding a channel is a nightmare. Uh, what you really need is to have a new channel button, you set up a channel, everything's on the screen in high resolution, easy on your eyes, hit the next button, set up another channel, and so on and so forth. When you uh, use this radio and you want to turn off one of the zones, the screen goes blank and there's no information, so you're only seeing a half a screen when you know, you should be seeing data on the whole screen for that one zone. So that needs to be work on. It's kind of very unprofessional. So would I use the radio in more than just a goof off situation? Yeah, it can be used. You lock out a channel and uh, it works very well. It transmits very well. If you put in a uh, external speaker, which by the way, they have an odd size plug. It's really ridiculous. I don't know why they do that. But if you uh, put an external speaker in, it actually sounds pretty darn good. Would I recommend the radio? I think I would. It's okay. Uh, it's small radio. You could take in your uh, luggage and take it out of town with a small antenna and a mag mount, and you could have 20 watts of power, and it'll work just fine. Uh, it does need to have that external speaker to make it sound really good. The internal speaker and the microphone speaker are okay and they're usable, but uh, they could be a little clearer. The speakers are kind of small. Uh, the radio itself, it's okay. I don't mind having it. I'm going to use it for display and stuff. And since you can lock out the uh, other zone, it's usable in, uh, for different kind of situations. So yes, it is a usable radio. So let's see what Radio Oddity does and see how they fix it. Maybe they'll fix the screen. Uh, hopefully they'll fix the software because, like I said, the software is a nightmare. So everybody, that's my two cents. And uh, everybody, take care.